Hello, this is Seth Welling. Welcome to another 100 Greatest American Film List Reveals. Today we are going to review It's a Wonderful Life. Came out in 1946 and will occupy the 11th spot, 11th spot on the 1998 list and the 20th spot on the 2007 list. It went down, but that doesn't mean it's less important. This was basically Frank Capra's first film back from World War II, and he wanted to drum up support for the average American when this film. Now, Frank Capra had huge hits, like Mr. Smith Goes to Washington in the 30s, and he talked about ordinary Americans, Mr. Smith being an ordinary American who's had greatness thrust upon him. This movie stars Jimmy Stewart, who also starred in Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Well, you may know Jimmy Stewart today as the kind of character that Tom Hanks would play usually, like Charlie Wilson's War. It's kind of a Mr. Smith movie. This was never a, a Christmas hit when it came out. It, was, it wasn't even a very big film when it came out. It was almost like a failure for Frank Gamber, who used to be the psychotic director before the war. And this was one of his last films. It's a great film now, but to just have him be back and saying, here, I'm going to do an old to you, America, have it flop, must have been very disappointing for him. I mean, these were his people who always went to all his films because it was about them, when very few were about average ordinary people. It stars Jimmy Stewart as George Bailey. Mr. Potter, the villain, was... Lionel Barrymore, you know her. Lionel Barrymore's granddaughter, Drew Barrymore. Mary Hatch was played by Donna Reed. She's an icon of film and television. She even had a Donna Reed show from the 58 to sometimes in the 60s. It was a black and white comedy type of deal. Now... Frank Gomber's failure of a film would have stayed a failure had it not been from public domain. Public domain is when the copyright runs out and it becomes free to air on TV stations like PBS. PBS was number one in nine for screening. It's a wonderful life on their stations and affiliate stations. And from there, it just got on the cable. And it took on a second life of its own. And it became a Christmas film. It became beloved with old-fashioned values, American values, Christmas values. One of my dad's co-workers, it was his favorite film. And this guy was born in the 60s, like way after it was made. And he just loves to watch this film at this time of year, Christmas time. I gave it new life. Yeah, and interesting trivia about it. It's wonderful life. It was camera, Frank camera, and... Jimmy Stewart's favorite film to make. And the downside of my film going to the public domain is they try to do things to it like colorize it. Because it's a black and white film because it was made in 46. And it just loses some kids to it, loses some nostalgia. And Jimmy Stewart was Running against it, he testified in front of Congress about why it was about public domain, saying how they ruined the film when he colorized it, and I have to agree with him because, you know, it's kind of hokey as a film, you know, it's small-towny, and it's about this 
guys, George Bailey, who always wanted to make it out of town, but he never seemed to get there. He was in charge of his family's savings and loan bank, and his Uncle Billy played my Tom Mitchell and misplaced some money, which ultimately made Mr. Potter come after the no savings alone. The stress got to George Bailey so much that one night he went out and got drunk, walking through the snow and going, I bet the world would be better off without me. And then Terrence, who's an angel in training, Here's him and comes down and shows him what it would be like without him around. Aside from the Christmas message, this is another powerful message because many of us have thought this, you know, eh, life would be better if I weren't around. And it's not true. It's not true. You make a, cont- a contribution every day. It's important to remember that you, you may be the one person who can save someone else and I'm not meaning save someone from drowning in a frozen lake like George Bailey did do his for his brother. I'm talking about people. People may be lost without you. So there's good messages all over this film. And I, I believe it's become fable status. Like a story that passed down through the generations and always will have an audience at Christmas time and at other times to get my local non-profit theater it's doing free showings. Three showings in the nugget between 21st and the 23rd, about 4 p.m. They're probably going to get a really huge response from those showings. Yeah, Merry Christmas for those of you who celebrate Christmas. And for those who don't, have a good day off. If you like this video, click like, subscribe, visit my dialog box to find out what gear I'm shooting these films on. And have a happy Christmas, and if you don't celebrate Christmas, have a good day.